Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for uh, Tuesday, the 7th of June, 2016. Hope you had a good week. Had a couple of small winners and futures were good for Monday, but overall, action was very, very limited on very, very light volume, One point, really 1.4 billion NASDAQ shares at the close. There was some late volume, it shows 1.5, but it's not really what happened. Meanwhile, the feed market did creep up here. Uh, you can see the ES, this is the front month futures contract. That 13 sell signal is now negated. It's gone run its course at this point in time, and we are near a breakout on the market. Are we going to get it or not, despite the unemployment number or the employment numbers? Hard to say. We'll see what comes here next, but the volume is so light, it certainly doesn't make it interesting. Uh, let's go through everything here real quick. So crude oil down two cents to 49.67, still near highs of the year. Gold, sorry about that, up $5.20. Small gain after the big pop on Friday. S&P ended up gaining 10 points. Part of that was a gap. I'll show you that when we look at the intraday action. NDX gained about 14, which is nothing for the NDX. Obviously, it's the broad market that looks better. Sox continues to try to hold highs, even though it was down a buck 90 by the end of the day. Biotech's up 44 and change. There's a nice cup formation there. So again, biotechs and, and Sox look like they could go higher. And if that's if the ES breaks out too, look out. Uh, the VIX 1365. Pretty low close there. Got the trend at 0.71. That's a low close. The 10-day moving average is at 1.10, which is not any kind of a sell signal on the market. Like I said, NASDAQ volume here pretty light. Really was 1.4. It shows 1.5. Advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ was plus 1262. That's good market breadth. Plus 1190 on the New York. Google lost five dollars and eighty cents, but still holding. What a very narrow range this thing's been in for the last year, right? Apple still struggling under 100, even though it tried to get back over it today at one point. Uh, it did gain 71 cents. Amazon up a dollar 19, even though it has a 13 sell signal, but still in place. Uh, it's basically almost a new closing high on Amazon once again. Netflix up a buck 15. All right, the intraday action. Uh, here's the ES front month futures contract. We'll switch this over to five minute candles and take a look at it. Interesting thing today was we got the gap up, pushed higher. We had a 13 sell signal, flattened out after that, rolled over and tested the lows by a tick, and then bounced. But look at that, the risk line from that 13 sell signal, which is the pink line, that is exactly what was the wall later on in the day. Could not get through that. Pretty pretty significant signal there. And, uh, you know, again, a lot of this, look how flat some of this action was. I mean, yeah, the first 30 minutes surged up, and we had a nice opening range play and whatnot on the futures. But, you know, look at that. The next two hours is in, like, a three-point range. It's just absolutely horrible, and volume was weak. NASDAQ side, here's the NQ features, got a 13 sell signal after lunch, and the risk line there was the high of the day also. Can't get a better signal than that. Gave you Both sides gave you exactly what you needed out of that signal today. Unbelievable. All right, so what do we have for Tuesday? We've got uh, productivity, revised productivity for Q1, an hour before the bell, of consumer credit at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Neither one of those is very important. Uh, I will be on the road Thursday and Friday this week. It won't affect uh, the opening of the market. I'll be around for the first 90 minutes, two hours. Uh, but that's probably about it, especially on Friday. However, I did forget to point something out in the market preview for over the weekend. And that is that this week, uh, next week is options expiration already for June. And this is a quarterly expiration. And the reason we bring that up is because that means that the quarterly contract roll, which occurs in the futures markets, is going to be this week from Thursday going into Friday. And if you've been around the markets when that happens, you know that. Uh, things are completely dead. It throws off all the technicals. All the big traders basically step aside, don't play hard. Um, so you're going to see uh, all the volume in the June contract still on Thursday start to fade out. They slowly move it into the September contract. And then by Friday, there will be volume in the September contract, almost no volume in the June contract. And in the process, it's a shift in all the technicals. The big players kind of stay out of the way. It has a major impact on stocks as well. It makes it very boring. So whatever I talked about for this week, uh, Friday will be worse than that for sure, and Thursday is going to be hurt as well. Uh, so it's going to be a real difficult Friday to trade. But like I said, I won't be around. You'd think I'd planned it that way, and I didn't even realize uh, that this was the options, on, or I'm sorry, the contract uh, roll Friday, which is to me, it only happens every quarter, but it's a better day to skip than the monthly options expiration, because options expiration can obviously be boring as well. Uh, so that's about it. We'll have a market preview tomorrow for uh on Tuesday for Wednesday, and then another one Wednesday for the rest of the week. Uh, like I said earlier in the uh, weekend report, not a lot for data coming out here, so we'll just have whatever stock picks come up. We've reported the uh, results for uh, Monday in the blog. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal12. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a good trading Tuesday.